Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for fine art. You can call it visual art as well, cultural and creative art. Now for this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't have this application installed already in your device, I will advise you download this app in order for you to follow along this class. Now, Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for exams, for various exams, such as UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Calbepedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention but a few. You can download the app from our website, www.examguide.com or you can download it as well as using your Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update, to be updated on new videos as we upload. Now, if you're ready for today's class, okay, let's get started. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to fine art or cultural and creative art, you know, so today we are going to be looking at an interesting topic, very interesting topic. And in this topic today we are going to look at is called art tools and art materials. Art tools and art materials. Now there are a lot of materials and tools that you know, but today we are going to break them down. We'll start from the known, the simple ones, and then we'll crescend into the more delicate and difficult ones. Before any further I do, let's get started. So today I would want us to look at some of the things we are going to learn at the end of this topic. Number one, you'll be able to define what an art tool is and what an art material is. You can distinguish between the two of them, the art tools and the art materials. Even art equipment, you'll be able to differentiate between two of them. Now, you also know, you'll also be able to discuss the importance of those tools and these materials. You also have the ability to list and explain some of these other materials. And then, fifth, fourthly, you also know how to explain and how to maintain even how to improvise this material. So these are the things we are going to look at as we venture into this topic. Are you with me? Are you excited just as I am? All right, then let's go straight. Okay, now introduction. Let me tell you a brief, you know, let's just know exactly what we want to talk about today. Now, art materials, as art materials and tools are very essential to an artist. Now, as ingredients are a good as ingredients are essential for a good pot of soup, so is how, the, how important art materials and tools are to an artist. Now, students, you should also know that without this material, without this item, it is like a farmer who is uh, going to his farm without his hole and a cutlass, which he, he, which he will farm with. So it is, that is how essential the art materials are, you know. Now, Nature generally has provided sufficient tools and materials for us by, you know, for us by the artists to use, you know, such as clay, wood, stones, even plants, to mention but a few. All these are materials and some of them are even tools because they serve the same, they serve both purposes. Now, all around us, are they, all around, all around us on our daily basis are lots of items that we throw away into the trash bin, you know, and then discard them as um, wasted objects, which an artist see them as useful materials for his work. Now, all those things you do with carton, paper, bottle, something like this, you trash them. <laughs> they are very useful tools for artists. Now, they include, you know, you know, like I mentioned, paper, um, carton, straw, bottle, crown, aluminum products, even bicycle parts, to mention but a few. They are all tools, beautiful tools, you know, that an artist can actually use to create some of his works. Now, things like the marker, you know, the pen cover, you have even balloon, plastic. They are all art tools and art materials. Even your paper too. These are tools that you can actually work with as an art. So therefore, art materials are simple and readily available everywhere you go. They are just everywhere. If only you know how to use them and how to manipulate you know, and get what you want. Now, what is important is the ability to convey creative expression using available tools and materials within your environment. All right, so now let's look at the definition of the word. 
art material. Now, art material are generally referred to as mediums, but in certain instances, they are categorized as medium tools or what equipment. They are generally referred to as what medium, but in some certain instances, we are categorizing what mediums, tools, and equipment. In the course of the study, I'm going to break each and every one of them so you, you can see the difference between an art material and an art tools, and including what the art equipment. Now, let's define them one after the other. Now, the medium. Now, the medium is the thing that is seen most on all artworks. Now, to every artwork, the thing you see is known as what? The medium. For example, if you are seeing a painting, if it is not a mixed media painting, now what do I mean by mixed media painting? Now, mixed media painting is the painting that combines other things. You mix everything. You use, you use paper, you use uh, clothes, you use plastic, you know, on the canvas. Now, those things you can see and touch, they are known as what? The medium. Did you understand? Am I too fast? Now, let me explain that again. Now, those things you see, feel, and touch on an art work is known as what? The medium. Now, if you can relate with it, if an artist should make a very beautiful painting with plastic rubber, now it's regarded as what? The medium. The plastic now becomes the medium or the material that the artist was used. Now, we have several mediums such as clay, bronze, cement, colors, ink, plastics, paper, Carton, etc. They are countless. So these are what the mediums of what of art. So now let's look at the tools. Now tools and equipment are used to bring out forms, color of what of an artwork. Now the tools we use the tools to manipulate the the the, 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 the materials. The tools controls the material into your desired what item or your desired artwork. Now if you have those materials and you don't have the tools, automatically you are liable to produce a sharpy work. But when you have the right tools, now it is one thing to have the tools, and the second thing is what to have the right tools. However, in the field of art, that is where improvisation comes in. In the course of the study, I'm going to explain exactly what improvisation means and then how you can actually create your own tools in the absence of what the original or the real tools or the needed tools that would be good for what exactly you want to make. So you see, now when, whenever you're talking about art, that is exactly where the, um, the element got the idea from. Now since they don't have things, they don't have hammer, they don't have, they create these things themselves. So the same thing applies to us. So in the course of the study, we're going to learn how to create our own tools and even how to maintain our own tools. Now what is equipment? Equipment on the other hand are heavy machines. You know, they are either, machine, uh, they are either mechanical devices or electrical ones operated. They are either mechanical or what electrical was operated. Now, for example, what do I mean by um, 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 mechanical or electrical operated? Now, the mechanical, for example, these are machines that has a you know mechanical power. Now, such as your drilling machine, you know the electrical too. Now, um, what on your wheel, your 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 throwing wheel? Is a mechanical machine. I don't know if you know what the drilling wheel is. Don't worry. By the time we start listening, then you see all those machines now. And then your drilling machine is what is a mechanical. Even your handset, for example, I have a phone here. Now this is an what electronic what machine. We use it to make calls. We use it to design graphics. You know, you can work with your phone. You can do all that with your phone. So these are perfect examples of what equipment. So now we have some simple ex example of what mechanical equipment, which is the throwing wheel, as I told you. We have the cane. You know, they are, they are, they are mechanical um, equipment. Then we have your phone, we have your laptop as electronic equipment. We have even your, your, your drilling machines, your... So mention, but if you saw these are what the equipment. Remember, I told us that materials are those things you can see, feel, and touch on the work of art. Tools, they are used to manipulate and control the materials. Now, they could be what? Manual, they could be such as knife, pallet knife, brush, hammer, chisel, etc. In the course of this study, we are going to break them down. You see all the tools, most of the tools, and some of the equipment. So we also talked about equipment as machinery, you know, or mechanical driven or electronic words, operated words, machines, which I gave you examples that are wheel, and throwing wheel, cane, phones, laptops, drilling machine, filing machine, to mention but a few. All right. So now let us now take a look at some of the common materials and tools, which some of them, um, you know, take a look at some of the common materials and tools. What each of them looks like, their uses, how you can take care of them, and some necessary precautions to be taken while using them. And finally, how to improvise most of what, most of them. So we are going to break this down. Any material we pick, 
we break it down into blocks. You understand? We look at what the material is, how it can be taken care of, and then how we can create it or improvise those materials when we don't have them. So are we good to go? So we are going to treat improvisation here, the meaning of the material together in one section. So when we bring up one material, we'll look at it in what? In four blocks. Are you with me? All right. So let's get into this right away. Okay, so we'll look at the tools and materials. We're going to grade them in the same block. Then we'll look at the descriptions, which is what they are used for, their uses, what exactly is that tools, and then the uses. And then we'll look at the care and precautions, how to take care of them individually. And then finally, we'll also look at what the improvisation, that's how you can make it work locally. Are you with me? All right. So the first material we're going to look at here today is known as what? The adhesive. You're popular, you call it gum. You know, the adhesive. So what is adhesive? Now, I see they are used as glue, you know, to gum things together, to join things together. For example, we have the, the paste and they bind various materials together. Sorry, the, the, the paste and bind various materials together in art. Examples are paper, papers, you know, motifs in mosaic, collage, straws, etc. Now, we, we use this adhesive to glue them together. Now, the best adhesive for graphics artists is what? The cow gum. The cow gum is what? The best glue for what? For graphics artists. Now, other adhesive includes the gum arabic, the grip fix, the evostic gum. We have the white glue. We have the super glue. We have the aradite to mention what a few. Now, these are powerful glues. Now, remember, mind you, every material has its own kind of glue. You cannot use a glue that is meant for paper to glue iron or to glue a plastic it won't hold so therefore you need to know the right glue for the right material so those are some of the things you should know for example you 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 you, you your shoe for example you cannot use a, a water gum or top bond to glue your shoe it won't work so what you need is either a super glue or an evo stick glue you see so that is exactly what you need for such materials as leather for your plastic you don't need an eu gum to glue your plastic you need the gums like super glue or aradite to glue the plastic. So for wood, you don't need aradite or super glue. You need what? The top bond. So don't worry, we'll go into that as we proceed in this one. Now, ways of how to care for your glue. Always cover the container after taking the desired quantity. Some of them dries up fast and they evaporate very fast. Avoid contact with what? The fingers. For example, if you are gluing, if you are using your the super glue, you know how the super glue is now. If you touch your finger and then you clip your two hands together, I'm sorry, then you just have to enjoy yourself before they can split it out. They will, you have a blister, you know? So avoid touching your fingers. It does not really look nice. So you wear a glove whenever you're using this glue for safety precautions. Now, especially strong ones like what? Super glue. Always wear glove or something so that it will not touch, it will not get straight to your skin. Don't allow it to touch your skin. Now, improvisation. How can you improvise glue? Now, you can improvise glue with locate starch. Yes, for those of you that want to make paper mache and you don't have top bond, you can use your locate starch, your pap, you know, you know, to make this glue. Sometimes, I, some of my students, they use a, a floater. That's what we call this a floater. That's what I call it. Um, it's the white thing inside a new product. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Uh, I, styrofoams. <laughs> so, you know, that is what it's called. You can actually use that to create your own. You use it and then mix a little fuel or something and then stir it. You understand? And then you can actually create your own glue. So, this is exactly what the adhesive does. All right. Now, most of you are very familiar with these two products. The first one is known as the top bond, and the second one is known as what? EU gum. Both of them serve different purposes. The top bond works perfectly, perfectly with paper, wood, to mention, but if you, you know, the carpenters, they, enjoy, they love top bond so, so much. Now, why the EU gum, the artists love the EU gum? Because we work a lot with plastics, you know? The, um, the, when I mean the artists, I mean the normal, your normal regular artist that works with them, um, that produces billboard and all that. They work a whole lot with the EU gum. Meanwhile, the EU gum, we have different types of EU gum, but that's a different talk altogether. 
you know, you can get that. You can ask your vendors. They will actually explain that to you. So these are the gums. These are glue. Now you know the super glue. Yes, your regular super glue. And then you know your hot glue. Now, all these are different products for different problems. You understand? Each and every one of them have their specific problem they solve and their specific what need they solve. So that is what we know as what glue. So let's look at the number two art material, which is the axe. The axe is an iron head and a wooden handle. It's a tool used to cut down trees, wood, stones, most sometimes you can call them firewood, and the same tree into what pieces before what carving. Now you use it to chop trees into pieces before what carving. You know, most times, and if you're carving carvers, they use the axe to, to chop it out, to chop some unwanted part of um, a tree that they are working at. Now let's look at the um, precaution and how to take care of this axe. <laughs> Do not use on stone, less the sharp edge is what damage. If you use the axe on stones, you will damage the sharp edge. Avoid too much contact with what sharpening. And when not in use to prevent what rust, avoid water contact. You know, so you just avoid water contact with it. Always make sure that the head is firmly fixed to the handle. You know, that's whenever you're working, make sure the head is firmly fixed to the handle to avoid getting to spin off and then cause a serious damage. So the sharpened part should be very should be taken with should be should be should should be taken care of properly. You don't keep it close to children. To avoid fall and it's usually very heavy so don't keep it close to kids to avoid fall now the local blacksmiths they are capable of producing this you know the blacksmiths they can actually make the axe for you that is if you want it so there is no local way of improvising unless you want to be the element you use stone to improvise to act but i doubt but the major way we can actually you know make us is very iron and then you just need your local blacksmith that can make that for you. So let's take a look at the picture of an axe. You see how beautiful these stuff look? Very interesting. <laughs> All right. So that's the axe. Okay. All right. So now the next thing we're going to look at is the button. The button is an armed long wooden, slightly narrowed at the two end. It is a carved tool for weaving on the loom. You see the button more on the loom. Don't worry, I will show you what a loom is. A loom is a weaving machine where you weave clothes. For those of you that know what we call their shoki and their kwete, yes, it is done on the what? On the loom. It is used to space and separate, you know, the wrap for the weft. Is then to lie them horizontally and then space it in between the wrap and the weft to press it down and make it what? To force the weft to be very tightened or fastened on the loom. So we use the, um, the, the, the button to, you know, to fasten the, uh, the wrap on the weft in the loom so that it becomes very tight and then fixed now it should be kept properly when not in use not to be used as a cane or walking stick to avoid what damage so most times you know see children if you keep these things where children are they might just see them and then they start playing with it so you really need to avoid that after using the loom and after using the the button you keep it properly to avoid what damage now it can be carved from local you know, both strong wood and by what? Wood covers. You can actually, you can even do that yourself. That is if you have a loom, you know, that you really want to work with and then you have a damaged button. You can actually create that yourself. So what exactly is this button? Now, if you watch, if you look at the images you have there, you can see those images you have there. Okay, let me see if I can actually point them. Okay. Okay. Now, for example, look at uh, this. This is, this is known as what? The loom. And this here is the button. So they use it to push down the, the, the wrap to fasten tight on the whip. You, you're seeing it. So the same thing here too. That's the, I just, that's the button. You're seeing it. So this is the button. They use it now to fasten, to tighten up uh, uh, the wrap on the weft. Now, this machine is known as what the loom. Don't worry, I'm going to. We are going to talk more about this machine in our in in, in, in uh, further study. Now, for the people that makes aquate material, they use it to make this aquate. They are very expensive materials. Aquate, ashoke materials. It is one of the simple machine for weaving 
or right. So, okay. Okay. So now let's go back to the next one. Now let's look at the beta. The beta. Now the beta is any flat object, in most cases is wooden object, used to beat in works of art into a desired what? shape. So we use the beta to beat in works of art. Mostly the people that use it more is the sculptors. Those are sculpt, the modelers. Yes, when they are working with clay, they use the beta. It looks actually like your garretona. They call it the spatula. So it is one major tool that is used by the sculptor. Now scrap excess. Now it is also used to scrap excess clay off the flat wood at an interval or at the end of what the exercise. So now can be easily made by what anybody, you know, with your cane, with your bamboo stick, with any palm from anything you can actually use as what to serve as what as a beater. So let's take a look at how the beta look like you see i told you it looked like your gary toner uh -huh. it can be anything that can actually help you to scrape out ss clay or use to beat in what the clay work that is for the sculptors you know for currently now people that makes cake they actually use the beta too to fasten uh the uh, the the icing on the cake properly all right so the next thing we're going to look at is the burning rod now the burning rod looks like a, it can be a knife that is heated in the fire now it can actually be the soda iron you know what they call the sodium iron yes the sodium iron i will i guess the, the i have a sample of it and i will show you the picture exactly what it looks like so as for those of you that don't know you really understand exactly what the um, the iron and the um, iron burning rod looks like now it's a sharp pointed rod with wooden handle used by craftsmen it is used red hot to create design on leather on calabash or even on wood it could be used to bow holes on such or any craft so you see now most times we use the sodium iron or we use you know a very hot red hot iron to make these things now how can you take care of this now always make sure that it is turned off if you're using the electric one and make sure that the iron is not hot keep it take it out of reach of children don't allow children to come close to it because you will damage them completely and then how can you make this you can use your nail can use a knife. These are the improvising method. You can meet a blacksmith to make one for you. Any other tool with sharp ends can serve as what I can serve the purpose. Burning rod can be made by local what blacksmiths. So now let's take a good look at some pictures of what this burning rod. Now can you see? You see how red this the iron is. So we can actually use this to create any image we want to create on any material we intend working on. So. Um, for the electrical wall, now this is the soda iron. It's very, it's usually very, very hot. Very hot. So we use that to engrave things on, uh, to seal things, you know, to burn things, to mention. But if you, it's, it's, its functions cannot be overemphasized. Even the electronic uh, engineers, they use it to lead, to join to capacitor or resistor on any circuit. So that is one of the tools. The artist use all right now the next thing we'll look at is the calligraphic pen now the calligraphic pen is a pen that is used for beautiful writing so it has different names let me just explain exactly what we have here now for it is for letter for lettering and is a pen that has ink you know for drawing there are two types one with knobs and wooden handle with a detachable word ink pad the ink is pulled in normally as in to fill up the, the the space it has there and then why we also have the brush the brush type i uh, really we really see the brush type now currently now because what we have now is the nib type the one that has different nib from 0 0.1 to 0 0.6 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 down to 0 0.6 it has different nibs. don't worry i'm going to show you the picture so and it has what a handle just like your regular pen but the point is the only different thing with that is it has a special kind of mount now, when I mean the nib, I mean the mount. It has a special kind of mount. Now, whenever you're using this, don't press too hard to avoid damage. If you press too hard on the nib, you damage the nib. Wash the pen whenever you're done and dry it. Then return the pen back into its what? Its casing because it usually comes in casing. Return it back into its casing. Now, how to make this locally? You can actually use your feather or you can get a bamboo stick and then cut it into the shape 
you know, so anything that can absorb ink, cut it into the shape of um, the nip you want, the nip size you want, and then you can now use it to, what, to write. Now, so let's see exactly how the calligraphic pen looks like. So ex now this is exactly what the calligraphic pen looks like. If you see, you see this case in here. Most of you are very familiar with this pack. Now you, you see, these are the different nip size. They are the different nip size of the calligraphic pen. Now, this is how it's being held. And this is, you know, the, uh, we are the, these are the ink, the ink pack. So the, the writings comes out like this. They will usually use calligraphic pen for certificate writing. So that is exactly what we can actually, um, what we can do with the calligraphic pen. So because of our time, I'm going to stop here. So in a subsequent class, we proceed and then we we'll look at other um, art materials. There are many, there are so many of them. But subsequently, we are going to take them one after the other. But however, for today, let's just stop here because of our time. So we don't shoot too much. All right. So in summary, what and what have we looked at today? First of all, we look at the definition of the word tools and what materials. Now, I told us tools are different from what materials. Because there are some materials that are also tools. For example, your pen, your pencil, it serves two purposes. It serves as a tool and also what as a material. However, they are not the same. Materials are different from what? Tools. I'm referring to art. Now, art materials are different from tools. Now, art materials are those things you see on an artwork. You can relate with them. You can touch them. Example, the um, example is um, um, the paint, the canvas, your paper, your cement, your clay, your iron, your wood. Those things you can see. Why tools are what is used or they are used to what manipulate or to control the art, the material. I hope you get that. So, Learn to differentiate that. Now, I also told us that in, on that tools, we have equipment. You can regard them too as tools. But now, when you talk about equipment, we're talking about the mechanical equipment or the electrical controlled what, equipment. So get this and, and then you will very, very you know, fine whenever you see any question. Uh, because in YA, they might ask you, mention two art materials or below are art materials. And then you see them mentioning tools. You see them mentioning hammer, chisel. Uh, charcoal and then they now mention laptop so you can actually pick okay tools are what is used to control material what materials are the things you see on the finished work of art so exactly what you see on the finished work of art is charcoal so you just know that charcoal there will be the answer so we also talked about we discussed the importance of art materials and art tools like like i told us just like food ingredients are essential to a cook and as the whole is essential to a farmer just like as a car is essential to a driver, that is exactly how the materials are essential to what the artist. We talked about some of the importance, and then we also list and explain them in full. And then we also what talked about how to maintain them, and finally we also talked about how to what improvise them in case we don't have the needed materials. So thank you very much for sitting close with us. All right. So now let me ask. Let me ask us some questions as we look at them. You know, DNA. So. Define art tools and art material. I have overflogged this over and over again. So it is something you should know. So what is art tools and what is art material? Okay, I want to believe you know that. All right, so now the second question I want you to, to answer for me is explain any tool that can be maintained and improvised. Any two materials that can be maintained or improvised. Explain how any tool can be maintained or what improvised so when i mean any two maybe you can say how can you maintain like the one we talked about today we talked about the axe how can the axe be maintained you avoid using it on what on stones or iron yeah so how can it be improvised you can meet a blanksmith to create one for you so thank you very much now let's verge into the exam guide as we see some few questions but today i'm going to ask us random questions completely random into the random questions to see how far we have, you know, watched other videos that is related to art, you know, to what we are treating, and then so I try your hands in them. Right, thank you very much as we dive into the exam guide. Okay, so welcome to the exam guide. By now, I know you're very familiar with this, so let's just dive in straight. So practice for BSA, rising BSA, you click on your objective, and then we did cultural and creative art, you create creative art, and then let's do the random and just and then we'll select the topic we've talked about. So we just some of them I already checked. So I checked ceramics, I checked painting, I checked drawing, I checked sculpture. So you click OK and then we'll select. Remember I told you we are, we are solving random questions. So 
let's get it straight now okay let's try question number question number three say the major reason for creating a hole in a sculptural work is for dash creation of beauty mass reduction maximum resources quick completion and weight reduction so why do you think they create holes in sculptural works it's to reduce the weight so it's for weight reduction so if you choose e that's a beautiful answer and then you're correct all right let's see question number 10 okay no sorry let's try question number I need something that is okay. Question number six. Now, the following are products of local craft, except the following, the following are product of local craft. Remember, we talked about the improvisation, improvisation of what local materials. So, local materials now, which one among these things are a product of what is not a product of a local craft, or will I say improvisation? Number one, basket. Yes, can basket be produced locally? Yes. So, it's a product of a local craft. Number two, we have beads. Is beads yes. What about hats? Hat can be produced locally. What about cab um, mat? Oh yes. And then we have cabinet. Uh -uh. You need a professional to produce a cabinet. So if you choose the cabinet, then you're correct with your answer. Okay, let's just try one more question. Let's just try one more question before we we'll leave this. There is a whole lot of question. We have up to sixty questions here. You see have a lot of questions that you can try your hands on okay now let's look at this question number 28 if you're following now a free standing sculpture is dash form a free standing sculpture is dash form i told us we're trying a random question so a free standing sculpture is dash form a casting b high c low d relief and e round now, casting is not a freestanding sculpture. There are some casting work that are actually freestanding anyway. But in, with respect to this question, what they are looking at, they said a freestanding sculpture is dash. It's not casting. Casting is a process. High. High is, we have two types of relief. We have the high relief and the low relief. Automatically, I've killed three options from this option because we have the high, we have the low, and then we have relief. So three of them are one. They fall on that one. So the last thing that is left there is what? The round. So we have sculpture in the round. You know, you can appreciate it in the round. You can call it statue. So this is a free standing sculpture. And then if you say E, that is correct. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide. Now the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. Now you can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also have other features that make learning fun. Now it is a must have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you and bye-bye.